G'day guys, how's it going? This is Broadcasting Because with Pompey's Road to the top and we are now in the month of April, the second last month of the season of competition in the Empower Championship and this is when we need to get a move on. We have got six massive matches to be played this month and I think that the top six will be decided in this month. First of all, in this episode we'll cover the first three matches of this month. Firstly against Leeds United at Fratton Park, then followed by a match against Reading and then Ipswich Town as well. So the first match of an enormous month, pretty much a finals deciding month, is against Leeds United at home. We are fielding our full strength lineup. We've got Benjani and Hilsaklep up front. We've got Agumeng Badu in the middle and Parlos back between the sticks. And we need to start well because in the last couple of games we've been slow to start and although we have usually been able to come back, it's been really solidifying that victory and really playing like we actually deserve it. Uh, which has just escaped us, but we look to get off to a good start in the 21st minute. Benjani's playthrough goes storming towards goal, but White, who was one of our transfer targets earlier in the season, Leeds wanted to hang on to him, and that's why he defended very well. And then, yeah, they score a pretty sweaty goal, which is really annoying because that's all that the computer seems to be able to do. To be fair, it was a very nice volley there. The ball is pretty much behind him from um, from McCormack, but. Yeah, I'm pretty disappointed we went behind, to be honest. It was pretty even early days. Leeds had another great chance here. I'm really not sure what happened. McCormack sort of stalled on the shot and allowed our defenders to catch up. Palos gathering it in the end. And once again here, Soma couldn't really make most of the effort. But you can see pretty much three identical crosses from Leeds United. It was all they could do, and they finally capitalised again. It was Ross McCormack sinking his second in the 41st minute, and we went into half-time, two goals to nil down. It was pretty disappointing considering all Leeds did for that entire half was cross the ball in. And they really had no midfield play, so I thought for the second half we were just going to gun it down the midfield. That's what we did. Benjani played it to Eric Husaklev, who on the turn was just clipped out. Agaming Badu finds himself in a little bit of space to run on, decides to have a crack, but Lonigan finds that pretty easy and takes it on his chest. He bombs it back forward, but have a look at this. Gentiletti wins the header. Husaklev takes it past the defender, Gve. He's all on his own, can chip it across to Benjani, who with the diving header sinks the goal in response and the 60th minute mark right on the stroke of the hour and Benjani brings us back into the game as he's done so well. A great setup play and a bit of luck I think that the defenders were entirely out of position. And that goal was a turning point for us in that match. From this point on, we turned around and we started to really put Leeds under some offensive pressure. In the 86th minute, we're running through on goal. Joel Ward gives it over to Harry Kusaklev. Back heels it back to Ward. He gets taken out in the box. Referee! Referee! Awards us a penalty! You little beauty! 87th minute, we have a penalty and this is it. This is it. Jamie Mackey steps up and puts it in the back of the net. The scores are level in the 89th minute. We have come from behind at home to level the scores against Leeds United. Boom, 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 Jamie Mackey. You little beauty. Well, Leeds United held onto the ball for the final minute or so, and we ended up running out with the one point in a two-all draw against Leeds United at home. I'll take the point where we can, because it's much better than a loss as far as I'm concerned, and I'm very happy with the rally that the guys put together at the end as well. Now, for our second match of the month of April, we come up against Reading, who are right up there for promotion as well. They've got some great players too. They've got guys like Lafondre, Adam Federici, the Australian keeper, and a couple of good guys in the midfield as well. So we knew that if we gave them a sniff, then they would really make us pay. And early in this game, their passing game was extremely irritating. It was ping-pong passing. They penetrated our defence and put the first goal on the board in the fourth minute. I was just... I mean, they hit us out of absolutely nowhere. We didn't expect it, and I don't think we even touched the ball at that point. Wynn gets a great turn, and he hits the upright, beats the keeper, Federici, but he can't beat the post, and we are still kept out. They do get another run through here, Renning, in the 22nd minute. It's Hunt on the ball, finding a lovely pass to Lafondre, but it is just cut off at the last second by Etuhu. Now, with all their passing, we knew that it was going to be on the counter-attack that we might have a chance. Husserkleb fools Conley by taking it around him. Could have played it to, I think that is Halford, 
But if Luke Varney had held his run for just a split second longer, he would have been through for the equaliser. Unfortunately, he was caught offside. McEnough finds a way past our defence. Somehow, Friend is sent flying, and he just sends it wide of the right post. And at half-time, we are down away from home, one goal to nil against Reading. Well, as I said before, I knew that it would be on the counter-attack that we'd get them. They pushed all their men forward, and all of a sudden, there were gaps to exploit. A two who turns around Mills, puts a scintillating ball to where he cuts the clip, dinks it over Federici, and amongst an excellent display of the player impact engine, scores an equaliser in the 49th minute. Well, our equaliser forced Reading into action. They made two quick substitutions, pretty much back to back. And in the 60th minute, we started to really, really press them. Luke Viney is played over by Eric Kusiklep again, who's having a great run of, great run of form at the moment. Viney finds himself one on one, takes it past the keeper. It's a tight angle, decides to take it on, but Mills gets a double block in to keep us out. <laughs> that is a great sliding tackle by Friend, by the way, to dispossess their attacker. And we really, really started to press Adam Federici from this point on, but we just could not find a way past him. The Australian really, really stepping up to the task and keeping a lot of shots out. Schenkers and Norris came on for Agaming, Badu and Christiak. And look at that. It's Husaklet playing through Luke Varney once again. Takes a touch past Gorx and the defensive line. Just needs to take it past Federici. Does so. But I think Federici knocked it towards the goal line with the back of his palm. That is a, a, a crazy save. Makes another excellent save there, and they're able to clear it away. Federici was just a wall in defence towards the end of this game. And the final chances of the game did go to Reading. They had a corner in the 90th minute, firing it in towards Connolly. And the volley is had by Church, but we are un so they are unable to find a way past Palos. And in the end, it does finish one goal apiece. Just another one point. It's not great, but we'll take it where it comes. Well, for our third and final match of this episode, we come up against Heskey and Ipswich Town. This is a game which we have penciled in as a win. We have to win this game. Any more draws, and we are pretty much considered out of the race for promotion and a spot in the playoffs. We beat them earlier in the season, and we're hoping to emulate that task again today. In contrast to a lot of our games this season, chances came pretty easily in the early stages of this match. Eric Hussaklet finds his way past a bumbling defender to get the shot away, only to be kept out by a very nice save from the Ipswich keeper. Again, with a lovely turn from Hussaklet, trying to find, seeking for that bottom right-hand corner, but cannot quite find it. And we found it pretty easy going on early days. It was just a matter of time until we found the back of the net. Hussaklet showing off his dribbling skills to find Luke Viney, who takes it around around the keeper and slots it in the back of the net right on the half hour mark and isn't he happy about it as well we're up 1-0 at home we're going to put it behind us pretend it's nil all again because we have to make sure that we put this match to bed a lovely block followed by a good save from Paulus as well keeping Ipswich out right on the stroke of half time Wynn gets around the defender and gets knocked from behind decides not to go to ground decides to stay on his feet and the penalty is not awarded surely he should not have to dive just to get the penalty but nevertheless we are 1-0 down at half time and our defence was starting to feel the pressure of the Ipswich attack. They had a lot more of the ball for this second half and they probably had the better of the chances as well. Heskey had a couple of decent shots but Palos was thankfully equal to them. I brought on Martin for Norris to try and add a bit of pace and just a bit of variety and you can see here we were really struggling defensively. I don't think we even had a chance going through. Heskey had a great shot actually uh, with his head uh, if only he'd been able to stay on side and not find the bar, uh, that might be a little bit more difficult than it sounds. But nevertheless, and Manuel Agaming Badu is running through on goal, forcing a good save from the keeper. Benjani and Christie come on for Agaming Badu and Eric Husserklep to see out the final stages. And although the last cross is an absolute shock and nothing comes of it, thankfully, and we're able to run out with the vital three points at home, thanks to Luke Varney, with the only goal, a 1-0 victory to Portsmouth, but we'll take it where we can get it. And if you take a look at the table, we're sitting at sixth position, and that means, as it stands, we are currently going to challenge for promotion. All we need to do now is make sure that we keep up our standards, and if we do, I'm sure we'll be achieving our goals. Well, that is the end of this episode of Pompey's Road to the Top, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, I really don't know how long this series is going to be. It all depends on whether or not we end up 
qualifying for the promotion playoffs. But I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. Be sure to watch out for when the next episode lands. Cheers, guys, and stay tuned.